dominating that mid lane matchup. And while you might see a lot of Yasuo's go for like a Blade of the Ruin King next, something tells me he's got the gold uh, for the Infinity Edge to come out next. So at this point, 100% of Curtis High School's kills come off of Airwalker, and that is somewhat to be expected just because he is the highest rank on the team. He's picked one of his comfort champions, and he is snowballing that lane out of control. Interesting to see. Oh, Mr. Tony, though, you have to see if Bilbo Baggins can dodge out away from the spear. It does not hit. No hunted mark there. Will Mr. Tony be able to pick up a turnaround? No mana for Big Baggins. He uses the last of it on the Polymorph. Exo Soul coming in here at Pexy. Oh, you're looking out the flash in the death center. It's the flay. Special is that you? I don't know. But King Brian can't quite find any follow-up from the rest of his team. Captain Bacon Strip, man. This game has not been his. He continues to flay sideways instead of forward, uh, which is uh, not quite the plays he's looking to make. Let's put it that way. War coverage being cleared out from around the dragon area, and this time around it is a very uh, dominant vision control situation for Curtis High School around the dragon area. Even with Windwall preventing those dragon auto attacks, I believe they are actually blocked by that. Yeah, no damage taken. So blue team Curtis High School will take dragon number one. 13 minutes. A couple thousand gold lead, uh, at least kind of transpiring right now. And it does look like I will be solo for the rest of uh, today's uh, today's cast. So apparently some unfortunate situations happening with Young Crusader Kitten. Uh, if you guys want to uh, know any more details about that, you can actually uh, find him on Twitter at twitter.com slash crusader kitten. Ask him all about exactly what's going on. I'm more than happy to tell you. Top lane, Mr. Tony there. Can't find the spear to, or gets the spear to land, but doesn't follow up for the execute damage. A big trade lost means that at least for the time being, Big Baggins will be able to at least rest control of that top lane around. King Brian is coming top lane looking for the turn around, but something tells me he's not going to be able to get it necessarily. That chase is on. Big Baggins has to dodge away from this spear. Dodges everything and just backs on off the wave. King Brian, unsuccessful at every single gank so far. Only kill of the game so far has come to Shimatora, which luckily enough gave him yeah. just enough gold for a needlessly large rod. When you're feeding super hard in lane, it can be very difficult to pick up those big ticket items. And so luckily enough, he did get that. But now his lane is going to start to spill over into these side lanes. Airwalker walks through a ward, but it's just going to casually come down bottom to, with the rest of his team to take out Curtis High School's second turret of the game. Now with two outers gone, it just turns their attention to that top lane, which is actually where, you know, it's kind of the only bastion of hope here for Arroyo High School D, uh, just because that's the only lane that's winning for them right now. I mean, maybe mid lane, you can say, is starting to come back, at least when you look at the CS count, but delaying the, uh, the Zhonya's Hourglass this late into the game and as the first item, it's going to be rough, especially versus Airwalker, who... Uh, they have a little bit of a rough time getting kills versus the Sonyas in team fights, but it is still going to be a very scary Yasuo, who, like I mentioned, did get enough of an early victory or an early lead in lane uh, to where he can actually skip the Blade of the Ruin King, which is a solid first or second item buy on Yasuo, and uh, go for it as his second item for a big, big mid game power spike. Shimatora doing the best he can do to find CS out there on the map. Finds enough for his uh, Sonya's Hourglass and is going to take a trip back to base to buy it. And that means his next Destiny Gate will be very, very effective because he can actually use it to bait team fights now. Spear landing there. Mr. Tony might want to go in on that, but doesn't choose to chase. Kind of confused as to why Mr. Tony doesn't want to go in on more of this, but actually wanted to make sure he got all of that CS at his turret. Now pushing out Mr. Tony, getting that move speed, misses the spear, and so this is going to be a bad fight to fight. Of course, you got to keep an eye out into the jungle. That was a, uh, most likely, yeah, last, or Dragon's kick from, uh, from King Brian. He was able to use that. And look at his item. He picked up a pickaxe after Spear of the Lizard Elder. 
That is a fairly terrible second item on Lee Sin, just because he's going to die instantly when he goes in. Especially when you look at Airwalker, goes in, gets the knockup, the execute from Karate Kid through the turret. Unstoppable Shimatura picked up a Lasagna's Hourglass and just couldn't use it. Top lane, though, we're going to see the Tremendo for the turnaround. Bottom lane, the damage is going down there, too. When you look at Apexi Ace and Potato Prodigy, diving back behind enemy lines to pick up the fourth kill in that turnaround. Four for zero exchange and turrets off the back of that Curtis High School coming to play. Red Team's turret has been destroyed. Only winning lane for Curtis High School was that Nidalee versus Lulu, but getting outplayed underneath the turret. Big Baggins. Bags are apparently big Red enough to win destroyed. that lane back. He's still down about 20 CS, but with the turret taken, that is a 5-0 to zero turret lead at 17 minutes in. Bubble there will not land, but the big one will. A red champion slain means Pexy Ace has been successful. Taking out Exo Soul. And yeah, the uh, the bush bait. I actually feel like Exo Soul could have stayed alive just by not being so greedy and overstanding by himself without a turret. Especially so close to a bush that actually contained champions. And now, even though there is a somewhat large uh, elo discrepancy, or at least tier discrepancy between the two teams, the really big advantages have just come from the lane phase. And, I mean, win lane, win game is an okay strategy maybe for solo queue, but in ranked fives, the coordination is a little bit better. You do wind up, uh, you know, going up against better ward coverage and the like, so we do have to keep an eye out onto this mid-game phase. It is about to hit us at the 20-minute mark with Dragon Respawns. Has this advantage been enough to turn it into more of a team and game-winning advantage uh, instead of just winning out these lanes? Dragon Control reasserted with a nice pink ward at the objective, and now with a roam around the area, the duo lane, after having won their lane... Pexy Ace and the Potato Prodigy will come back up around that area to at least check it out and look at the good ward coverage uh, that has been put down. There's Pink Ward, several Green Wards out there, completely safe for the duo lane, but more importantly, this is going to be a safe dragon in the way of Curtis High. Uh, don't know what was going on up there. Spear landed from Mr. Tony, but Miss Big Baggins just... He's like, what if I just glitter lanced you and you died? How about that? That's a pretty good trade there for Bill, for Big Baggins. Filling his Big Baggins up with a lot of gold and a lot of damage to needlessly large rod in the inventory. Probably looking for a death tap, death cap uh, to come out next. Engage, looking for the insect, gets it onto Karate Kid, and the safeguard out is enough to pick up the survival for Lee Sin, but the death sentence out there is no follow-up there. Airwalker going to get it played backwards. There is the wind wall, and just barely, Captain Bacon Strip and King Brian make it out alive. Blue buff actually going to get stolen away there is Apexi. Ace will pick it up. Uh, there's actually a pro player named Apexi for a while. Or at least a big name in the challenger scene. But this is Apexi Ace. Going to steal half of his name and add half of his own. Apexi Ace continuing that push down the bottom lane, which will be uncontested. If they, if they just continue pushing that, it's a free inhibitor turret. But with a recall back to base for Exo's soul, he'll be back in time uh, to uh, at least pick up the CS wave now that it has been... Pushed all uh, the way in. Recall there for Apexi Ace is looking for a Bloodthirster next, but he's going to pick up some penetration from Sorcerer's Shoes. In the meantime, this is about the strongest mid-game power spike you can get on a Corky. Top lane, though, still looking for these trades. Uh, 
Mr. Tony needs to land a spear in order to trade this out. Misses it. A good dodge there by Big Baggins. Has Air Walker there for the backup. Karate Kid there. Will Mr. Tony be able to jump over the wall? He does, but he's now actually faced out with uh, running away from Karate Kid and basically the entire enemy team. It's five champions top lane just to kill Mr. Tony. He doesn't choose to jump over the wall, which may be his untimely demise. Needs to dump away here. He fits it right between the turret. Only takes one turret shot. Is Mr. Tony going to live? He does. That actually sets up for a nice kill in the mid lane. Onto this mid lane turret. We'll see if King Brian can take it down. No, they don't. Just click the turret. This is horrible. King Brian actually gets a nice kick backwards. But it's going to be an immediate one bounce, two bounce, three bounce, four. Looking for Executioner. On to Exo Soul. Flash in. There's another one. The gold card comes out. But this is going to be an ace. With the exception of Mr. Tony. Who did not, in fact, die that game. He's like, oh, I don't know about you guys. They're diving him. They want this kill. Mr. Tony, there's the ace we were looking for. Flash through the base. And there's the surrender. 15 to 1 at the 23 minute mark. Dominant game one win for Curtis High. That's going to do it for our first game of the second series of the day. So we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to grab some water and enjoy the solo cast arena. We'll be back with some more high school Star League action. In just a minute, so stick around. We'll be right back. Somehow you can find a slightly different frame of mind right here in my arms, away from all harm. You'll be safe from all the flares, although I know you don't care. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the High School Star League. It's HSL Season 2. We're into our fall semester, coming into game number two of our second series of the night. My name is Rapid, and I'm unfortunately not joined by Crusader Kitten. So I was going to like erase his name off the screen, because he uh, fortunately uh, is not going to be able to join me for our second 
match of the night. So it'll just be my sultry, dulcet tones coming your way on the mic. So hopefully you guys enjoy our second game of the night. I do hope you do, because this is high school action. It's about the, the it's one of the earliest experiences that a lot of kids are going to have to playing together uh, competitively in League of Legends. And so it's a great organization to deprive, provide them uh, you know, a, a construct with, when, with within which to uh, to do that. Gosh, my uh, loquaciousness needs to take a back seat. Band's coming out there. You can see once again the Tristana band. It's not a mystery. It is uh, kind of the history of our last three games, all with Tristana bands out there. So even with the change to her kit, maybe nerfing her attack speed a little bit, still very strong champion, one that we won't see being played at all here tonight. Uh, at least not for a Royal High School D. They're going to ban that one out. Zerath, though, the pick that uh, we expected to see in game one as it was Airwalker's main. And uh, if I can actually screw up our overlay here for just a second. Yeah, Airwalker, uh, not actually quite as well known for as Zerath, but it was banned away in game one. It's actually made it all the way through here in game number two. Potato Prodigy will lock that one in with a Maokai in the top lane. So we're looking at, uh, you know, Maokai top. Whenever you see the Maokai, you always have to think, uh-oh, Yasuo team comp again. But that was actually banned out. So this time around, uh, you're probably just looking for big tanky tanks to lock up enemies. And then once you have everything all locked down, then you throw down the uh, right of the Arcane, I believe, is the, uh, the Zerath ult. So uh, snare from Maokai, it's uh, going to be about one and a half seconds at max rank, or 2.25? forget what the max rank of uh, Twisted Advance is, but... Most importantly, it is a lockdown spell, and it's going to set up for some nice rights out of the arcane. If uh, uh, Airwalker wants to roam up the top lane, it's probably where things are going to be going down. But if you look back towards Royal High School D, they need an answer for that mid lane matchup because it was very, very one-sided. Airwalker really putting all that uh, all that ladder climbing to use. Probably didn't realize it was like it's like a Mr. Miyagi moment. He's like climbing the ladder. Which accidentally gives him like super good arm strength, and then he's called upon mystically through the you know course of serendipity to like lift a car off of some kid. And you're just like, well, you were training for this all the time, climbing simple ladders. Yeah, well, uh, all that laddering has paid off with the highest uh, ladder rank of his team, and he definitely showed it out there in the last game. A really, really good carry game, winning his lane and helping the rest of his team win the game. So in order to keep that from happening, you need a lot of lockdown and a lot of save the dude potential, like I called it earlier. Shields are a big way to do that. And with the Lulu and Orianna locked in, it is going to be a big shield comp. And I mean, if you count the blast shield from King Brian, he'll have one of his own, as long as he hits uh, Champion or Minion with a spell. It's going to give him a shield, too. So, looking for the last two picks. Should be relatively defensive. Uh, there is actually a decent amount of damage, so you don't need to go too heavy. But if you look at the last two, or the next two picks coming in for Curtis High School, it's a lock-in once again on that Corky. Karate Kid picks up his Lee Sin again. All right, you know, I'm feeling you, but at the same time... Uh, the lead didn't really do all that much. He was a playmaking champion with a now, without a team to make plays with him. And it's always a very risky situation to have uh, when you pick up a lease. And of course, Vi, kind of the same situation. You're good at forcing fights, but if your team is behind, then you're probably pretty bad at forcing fights. So, because, uh, you know, you kind of just die immediately afterwards. But still looking for that top lane matchup. Rumble would be a good call for the top lane if you want to run the Lulu mid. But then where do you put the Orianna? So unfortunately, we got to find a different place for all this action. And they're looking for the duo lane lock, and it is a vein locked in. Maybe new Soraka, maybe Sona. You're looking for sustain, nonetheless. And you have to get out of the lane phase for this ball. What? That's a support Lulu. All right, I probably should have seen that one coming, but I, you honestly just don't expect to see support Lulu at all these days, uh, given the popularity of it in uh, in solo lane. So it'll probably be Lulu versus Nami matchup. We saw Nami Corky. It's very, very effective, and it's going to be coming out again uh, for Curtis High School.
And that's going to do it for our champion pick and ban phase. Love the Zerath pick. We actually saw it banned in game one. It's coming back here uh, in game number two. Uh, Karate Kid's Lee Sin still leaves me uh, with a little bit of uh, skepticism. So we'll see if he can put up the numbers big enough to impress me and, of course, everybody watching. And I do want to thank every single person out there for watching, for tuning into tonight's High School Star League broadcast. It's a great cause. It's a great situation. It's a great tournament series uh, with some equally great teams. Uh, we got a lot of Challenger and Diamond 1 players in HSL this season. Some very, very talented kids at playing League of Legends. And so they'll be coming out here uh, to do just that. And so uh, we'll come into a three-minute spectator delay here in just a second so while we're out there doing that you guys are gonna have to sit tight hang tight for a commercial break i'm gonna go get a drink so i can solo cast this to you guys for a little bit longer and we'll come back with our last game of the night it's game number two a royal high school looking to pull things back versus curtis high school of course we'll have that game coming your way in just a minute
30 seconds until minions spawn. 30 seconds till minions spawn, but zero seconds until we start this game. So welcome everybody. We're back with our last HSL game of the night. This is Royal High School D will take on their opponents. Curtis High School. It's a relatively difficult uh, first game of the night. We'll put it that way. But uh, either way, Arroyo comes out with zero points, and uh, they'll be looking to bring back a few more from Curtis High School. Uh, they have uh, they picked up one game here in this series. We'll see how many more they can grab. So we uh, try to get everything lined up here and put it where it's supposed to go and I think that's uh, that's a pretty good place for it one, two, three and then take this one back by three and there we go so success great success even has been had here uh, at least as far as the solo casting goes and I will be here by myself so if you're like who on earth is that annoying guy on the mic wait a second there's a pause you know what the pause means Pause means that in order to prevent ghosting, we need to block out the mini-map, so I'm going to do that real fast. We'll be back as soon as we can possibly get this game underway, but uh, while we're paused, I uh, want to uh, let everybody know, yes, I am going to be here by myself, uh, at least for the time being. We'll see if we can get somebody else in here to uh, maybe make up for that, but, uh, but yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys enjoy my solo casting, hopefully it's enjoyable. If not, maybe turn on some music or something. I don't know. But uh, either way, uh, if you like what you see, you can, uh, of course, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash vapidcasting. And uh, by the score count on the screen, you can, in fact, see that, yes, in fact, Arroyo did lose game number one, Curtis High School, with a very dominant game one win. And, of course, it was mostly off of uh, guys like uh, Airwalker destroying his lane. Like, he didn't just win his lane. He destroyed it. Um, uh, Twisted Fate was still... Uh, or not Twisted Baby, but Mr. Tony was still relatively effective at that point, but uh, you know, there's only so much you can do to come back from that. So, at this point in the game, we are going to see, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe a few lane swaps coming out there. I'm not sure exactly. I mean, Brian's back in the same place, but we do have a